All right, so are you paying 50% to your team leader? Today, the question is, is are you paying your team leader 50%? And, uh, and then, you know, before you start to panic, all my buddy team leaders out there, um, I, it was a real question that came to me the other day, or more of a, probably an emotional statement of uh, an agent I was talking to, and they're like, hey, I pay my team leader 50%, and I, and, and then it just went from there. And you could imagine where the emotion was, and it was probably over some silly scenario, but at the same time, you know, perception is reality. So this question or this message or this public announcement uh, is probably better used as a an eye opener to think, am I really paying 50%? What is the value proposition I'm getting for it? Does it make sense? So before we dive into, are you paying 50%? I want to look at maybe the typical agent out there, the typical solo agent. I've got one in mind, I won't say his name. I hope he's watching this because he'll know exactly who I'm talking to. Um, but I had someone the other day that said, you know, I made $120,000 last year as a solo agent. And you know, in Chattanooga, Tennessee, that's, that's not bad money at all. And um, when, he started, when I started to think about it, we were comparing from like when he used to be part of a team and how he is as a solo agent now, the responsibility that he has on himself as a solo agent, the risk he has, the responsibility, the money he has to spend, versus what he had to do when he was part of the team, which still had responsibility and risk and money and you know all that kind of stuff as well. But then we started, I started thinking about the math of it here. So today, I wanna have, have, have another guest today. We had a guest last show, but come on over here. This is Chandler. Chandler is our high school intern uh, for the, the summer, right Chandler? <laughs> all right, this is Chandler. So he's gonna be our dry erase board here. So what I started thinking about, I was like, all right Chandler, so um, here's what I'm thinking. Pushing back to the wall here. Uh, so if we had a hundred, if we made hundred and twenty thousand dollars last year, and we're solo agent, let's just say for numbers' sake that maybe um, off the top, let's say you work for a franchise. Off the top, you've got to pay. Oh my gosh, can someone of you be a calculator for me back there, Cassie? We got a calculator going here. So let's just say hundred and twenty thousand dollars is what they said they brought in. Let's say the first thing off the top is they've got to pay some form of franchise fee. Let's be conservative. Let's just say it's like 5%. I don't know. Um, so let's say 5% comes off of the top of that. How much is 5%? Let's just add up those numbers. So that would be, uh, uh, what is that, like 6000 bucks. Okay, so let's just say $6,000 is our franchise fee. Then like the brokerage has got to make money. I, I don't want to get too much in the weeds. Let's just call it twenty grand. let us just call it $20,000 is what that brokerage took away from out the whole year. Um, we'll call that brokerage. Now, for this person to do $120,000, he had to sell some houses. He had to buy some leads. I happen to know that this person was spending about $1,000 a month on Zillow. So let's call that $12,000 a year on the big Z. And then uh, let me think. Let me think. What else is there? Oh, he has a CRM. I think he spends about $500 a month on that CRM. And uh, what else? What else? Oh, I know he listed about 15 homes last year. I know he pays for professional photography and the drones and all that kind of stuff. I'm going to say that that is, oh, call it uh, $350. What's 350 times 15? What we, what's, what's our math here? Math is hard, right? 76, we'll call it 7,600. Okay. So that would be 15 photos. Um, what else am I missing? Let's see here. We've got franchise fee, we've got brokers, we've got Zillow, we've got CRM. Oh, I know he also wanted to like brand his business and business cards and everything. Let's just call it like five grand on branding and doing those things. Oh, and I know so that I know that they also get occasionally into like um, into uh, uh, like like charities or like hey the baseball local baseball team wants a sponsorship. So let's just throw another like twenty five hundred dollars in there. I think that this is fairly realistic. Um, and then, oh, their office charges like a fee to, to be there, 100 bucks, so maybe that's 1200 I know your hands are getting tired, Chandler. We're gonna go a little higher here. So we got $1,200. The list could go on and on and on. But let's see here, anybody doing the math for me? Where are we at? This is your job, Chandler, come on, sing for me. Not getting any love from the intern here. All right, so what we're sitting at is $65,000. Thank you. 
That's all right. Math is hard. We're just real. We're just realtors, right? Sixty-five thousand less the one twenty. Can we see here how tough that is? Now I'm no mathematician, but that's pretty darn close to fifty percent, right? Oh, and by the way, let's just go ahead and take taxes out of that as well. Let's get out of the weeds. Thanks, Chandler. Appreciate it. When you think about when you think about that math, and you think that you pay your team leader. 50%, the way that the team leader should be successful, it's called crowdsourcing. It's, it's taking all of those things that we talked about on that board and in large scale, being able to reduce the cost to make it a win for everybody all the way around. And more importantly, you as a real estate agent typically make the biggest paycheck, not the team leader. The agent typically makes the biggest paycheck, I'd say in almost all cases. And, it, it, and, and if you're not making the biggest paycheck, Maybe it's because of the value proposition that's offered. So a lot of the teams that I work with, I think it's really important, and I'm actually talking now to the team leader out there who's watching this video. I think it's extremely important to be able to do two things, maybe even three. Let's, let's go with three tactical things that team leaders out there can do. And if you're, not a team, if you're not a team leader and you're a team member, maybe you should ask your team leader for this because it might bring some clarity to your world. Number one is the organizational chart, okay? Ask your team leader like, hey, can you just draw out for me like all the people involved? Because sometimes the team leader's leaning on people like I've got a CPA and someone that handles payroll and I've got all these things that aren't like a title on the team, but that makes our team operate. It's really helpful for them to see those things. So an organizational chart, if you heard me talk about it in some of the past videos, I also like a bonus, a bonus points here, a, vis a, a visionary, organizational chart showing where you want the company to go. I think that's pretty awesome if you want to show that to them as well. But number one's organizational chart. Two, I think the second piece of that would be um, like your lead flow chart. And I don't mean like lead goes from here to an agent or it's round robin or it's a, you know ability and availability or however you do your leads. I mean like how is it created? What CRM does it touch? Who gets it next? Who follows up? transaction coordination, and let's take it a step further. If you can get it past the second sale, now you're on track. Imagine after you close, you have your lead flow process of how you keep in touch with them all the way to the second sale and so on. You can repeat that, rinse and repeat over and over and over again, right? The third thing is, do we have spelled out what our unique value proposition is? I believe that every team that has any success at all has a unique value proposition. And I'm not saying that they just spend more money than anybody else, although that could be the unique value proposition. It's what does that team have to offer and how can you as a team member add value to it? What is that unique value proposition? If your team leader can nail those three things down for you as a team member, you might look at where that money's going and start to think, hmm, maybe I can build a really successful business inside of a team. It also opens up your eyes if you happen to be that entrepreneur out there that wants to start your own team. Guess what? You'll know a little bit more. Education is key. You got to know what you're doing. You got to be excited about it. And uh, you got to be passionate about it. But more importantly, you got to have the knowledge and know. So next time at the closing table, when you get your check and you do the math, because we know we always do, and we say, gosh, the team leader got this paycheck. I want you to think about all the pieces that helped you get there and more importantly, how are you going to take that customer that you're sitting at the table with right now beyond the next closing. I think it's really important you take care of these things and think about it in a whole nother light. Mindset matters. Pay attention to what's going on in the real world. And uh, comment below if you're a team member or a team leader what you think about this. Let me know. Um, I'd love to answer some questions and help you out guys. Thanks.